Hello everyone, Shroom Raver here, and today I'm excited and proud to bring you uh, Parasect Germain's first battle in the PPL. Yes, the Pokemon Premier League uh, kicked off earlier this week. Uh, everyone's been having their battles and there are some fantastic ones uh, on offer from week one. So, if you want to stay updated with all things PPL, uh, go and check out the YouTube channel and the Twitter link in the description uh, for all your PPL news that you might need. Uh, follow them there and all will be revealed. <coughs> now, on to the battles. Now, my first battle was against Alex, Wanzie Bayonet. Now, um, his draft sort of went quite similarly to mine. Um, we both wanted some of the same things and, you know, I got some, he got others. So I feel like our draft was sort of fairly similar in build-up and fairly even matched, I might want to say as well. Uh, so, you know, let's get into the team that I brought and why I brought them. So, going from left to right across the, uh, the sort of battle screen, the first Pokemon on that list is Houndoom. Now, the set I brought was, I believe, Naive Nature, um, max speed uh, with max attack and the rest into special attack. What we've got is a trapping set, and this was brought mainly to deal with one of his big threats on his team, Mega Bayonet. Houndoom is rocking out with Fire Blast, Sucker Punch, Pursuit, and Dark Pulse. As I say, built to take on the Bayonet, you know, Flash Fire is a thing if you go to the Willow. I resist is Stab, so I might be able to live one. I'm Focus Sashed in any case. And yeah, it's just there to really try and mess with that Mega Bayonet should it want to caution elegance, because a lot of my team is physically offensive. So, you know, Mega Bayonet with Prankster Willow is a scary, spooky thing. Second member on that team is going to be Registeel. I brought a fully physically defensive uh, Registeel with Iron Head, Thunder Wave, Toxic, and Shadow Claw. Shadow Claw there just so, you know, I can have something to hit his Bronzong and maybe his Reuniclus if he wants to bring it. Um, I brought Physically Defensive because Registeel was going to have to be an answer to a lot of things. One of Alex's most terrifying things on his team is Rampardos, and he has three Trick Room setters plus a Rampardos. So I went with the Max Physical Defense Registeel just to try and deal with that, and also it shuts down his Sylveon even if he decided to bring a modest spec Sylveon. With no investment in special defense, Registeel can still deal with it. It can still shut it down and two hit KO with the Iron Head. So I thought, felt safe bringing Registeel with physical defense investment. Third member of the team was Pile Swine. Uh, again, physically defensive. Um, nice to deal with the things like Garchomp and, and Dragonite. Rocking out with Earthquake, Bicycle Spear, Ice Shard, and Stealth Rock. Now, again, it's physically defensive because. I wasn't too afraid of Alex's specially offensive Pokemon. You know, he's got the Roserade, which I have things on my team that can deal with, Registeel again being one of them, Houndoom another. Uh, his Hydreigon I felt absolutely certain he wasn't going to bring, simply because I have a Fairy that does outspeed it, and with those 4 times weaknesses, not something you really want. So I felt safe with what I had uh, in the defensive investment uh, department. So, speaking of my fairy type, fourth up, Whimsicott. <clears throat> this is max special attack, uh, with enough speed investment to outspeed anything non-boosted on Alex's team. Everything else, everything left over was thrown to HP, and I was using Moonblast, Substitute, uh, Protect, and Encore. Again, very nice for dealing with his prankster user, I've got my own one which is faster. And the reason it's got Sub and Protect is because I was so afraid of Trick Room. And, you know, if he's got Trick Room up and I need to deal with it, you best believe I will sub-protect stall it out if I need to, you know? <laughs> if I need to, I will do it. So, then we have my sort of big physical hitters. We've got the captain himself, Mega Gallade, is in the building. Uh, jolly nature, everything into attack and speed, as you might expect. And we've got close combat, we've got knockoff, ice punch, and poison jab <clears throat> for that Sylveon. And finally, we have Gyarados. Now this is a sub DD set with uh, Waterfall and Ice Fang. Adamant Nature, everything into attack, uh, 216 into speed, 
so that at plus two it will outspeed everything on his team even if it's scarfed. Everything else put into HP, relatively good stuff. I was confident with the team. Uh, when I saw Alexis, now, he is bringing Sylveon, Garchomp, Mega Bayonet, Rampados, Bronzon, and Luminion. Sylveon, I was so not worried about. So not worried. I have a Registeel, it's gonna be fine, you know? Uh, Garchomp, I was looking to knock off what I was gonna assume was a Scarf. Mega Bayonet, I'd have to deal with, as I'd explained before, with Houndoom, and, you know, maybe Whimsicott if need to be. Uh, but I wanted to try and take out that Mega Bayonet as soon as possible. Same with Rampardos. Rampardos is a threat, especially in that potential trick room. He's got two setters on his team. So I knew I wanted to get rid of that Rampardos as early as possible too. Bronzong I felt safe dealing with, and Luminion, I'm aware that it can't be underestimated. I've played enough PU to know that Luminion can't be underestimated. I don't have any special, uh, super effective attacks against it, but at the same time, I still felt relatively safe going against it. So, those are the teams. I assumed he would want to lead off with either his Bronzong or his Mega Bayonet. So I live with Houndoom. Let's see what happened. So, here we go, getting underway with the battle. I lead off with Houndoom, as, as I said. Unfortunately, Alex decides to lead with Luminion. This is a bad thing for me. Very bad. However... It can't really touch Gyarados, I know that. Gyarados is a fairly safe switch, and if, God forbid, he goes for the Scald and gets the burn, I do have the Lumberry. However, I was so prepared for Trick Room, I did not see Tailwind coming. And suddenly, my plans are thrown into turmoil, because I wasn't expecting Tailwind. Now, he knows I'm not going for a Water Attack, he's got Storm Drain. But I know he can't touch me, but I also know I can't touch him. Those thoughts in mind, he knows I'm not going for Stab, He's going to go into his Rampardos with the really offensive switch, but I do the only thing I can against Luminion, I go for sub, and that saves my ass, and the momentum is now with me very early on, because he has to stay in to break my sub with that head smash, or risk me setting up. So that's what he's going to do, he's going to take his, uh, his recall damage whilst he breaks my sub, it also turns out that he's Life Orb, which is the spooky scary set that I was super terrified of. However... I am now free to go for the Waterfall, and early game turn 3 I'm going to be able to take out his Rampardos, which I was so afraid of, and was so relieved to get rid of. Like, you, you don't even know how, how relieved I was. In comes Garchomp, and Alex is about to make a series of stupendous plays, right? He brings in Garchomp, I know these things get rock slides, I'm going to go into Registeel, really safely, but he goes for the Earthquake. He makes the ballsy play, goes for the Earthquake on the Registeel. I need this Registeel, because I need it for the Sylveon, like desperately. I have nothing else, the Sylveon ruins the rest of my team. So, that in mind, he knows I'm going to switch out. So once again, he makes a ballsy play and goes into the aforementioned Sylveon on my Registeel, because he knows I'm switching out, he knows I need this Registeel. I'm going to go into Gyarados, who he also knows that I need. Gyarados is my setup sweeper. This is what's going to finish me the game. And suddenly, everything is going wrong. My plans are in turmoil. I have to save this Gyarados. I have to go into Registeel and hope to God that this thing is not Specs. Because if it's Specs, it's going to go badly. He goes for the Hyper Voice, and it turns out he is Specs. This is a problem. Alex knew from the start that my Registeel was all that was stopping his Sylveon, and he does a sublime job of completely isolating my, my Registeel to the point where he can take it down and it's not a problem. His Sylveon's still at, f like, full. And now the problem is I can't one-shot it. So what I have to do is go into the Pokémon that was going to be my sweeper, Gyarados, and kind of just pray for a flinch. I'm not going to lie, that's what I was doing. Because I thought if I didn't get a flinch here and take this thing out, it's game over. Go for the Waterfall, does over half, don't get the flinch. He's going to go for the Hyper Ball, which is going to take out my Gyarados. In one fell swoop, I have lost my premier physical wall and my premier setup sweeper. So now he forces me into a position where I have to go into Mega Gallade and I have to go for Poison Jab. I can't take the risk with this Sylveon. It will ruin me if I do. So he can easily go into his Bronzong, knowing that I'm forced to go for the Poison Jab. And that's a free switching for him. And this is going to allow Bronzong to do all kinds of nasty things, because the Poison Jab's not going to do anything. I am going to be able to go for the knockoff. And this will do a, like a clean 60%, but 
but it's not enough for the two-hit KO. I do get rid of the Light Clay just before he can go for Reflect. This is great for me, and this might come in handy. So, I'm going to have to switch out, save Mega Gallade, go into something which I think is going to be safe, and that is my Houndoom. Houndoom going to come in, in before Rocks. Um, I didn't actually predict that, I thought he was going to go for Light Screen. But he goes for the Rocks, and here I just, once again, I make the safe play. I've been playing very safe this game, and it hasn't worked. But I'm going to keep doing it, I'm going to go for the Dark Pulse. He does make the switch into Garchomp, and you know, I don't have a lot of investment in Special Attack. This isn't going to do much, it's going to do like maybe 25%, which is, you know, okay. I'm going to call Houndoom back. I'm going to go into my Pile Swine, but again Alex makes the play. He sees it coming a mile away, he's going to be able to go for the Iron Head. But, this is physically defensive Pile Swine, it's going to take it fairly well. Here, I finally make a prediction. I predict him to go into the Luminion, I go for Earthquake. He's got to reflect up, this thing is defensive, this is going to do nothing, I have no investment, and it does an embarrassing amount, you know. After a couple of rounds of lefties, that's doing nothing. Here, the temptation for score for him is going to be sort of overwhelming, as his reflect wears off, which is very nice. So I'm going to go into my only member not to make an appearance on the stage yet, this is Whimsicott. Gonna come in and take some stealth rock damage, as Luminion just gonna go for the Scald, uh, not going to do a huge amount to to my bro, Fro Show. Uh, not going to get the burn either, which is fantastic. And now, what's going to happen here? Uh, the Luminion is a problem. I know this, and I just want damage. I need damage on Luminion. Loath as I am to say it. So I just go for the Moon Blast, uh, just trying to get you know chip damage on the Luminion. And you know it does maybe. 35-40% which is nice, he's going to get that slow U-turn for that all-important initiative. And it's going to allow him to go into his namesake, his Mega, his onesie Bayonet. And now we are about to have, ladies and gents, a showdown of the Prankster users. They all have their advantages, you know, if he's running Gunk it's game over. Um, he's bulkier, I think, a little bit. He's, he's more powerful with that big base 165 attack, but Whimsicott is quicker. And is easily going to be able to get that priority, priority sub off. You know, I'm going to outspeed him and go for the sub to scout out what kind of bayonet he's running. Turns out, very interestingly, he's running an infestation set. A set that I love on ghost types, but on bayonet, it's not going to work out from this time. That fairy typing gives neutral damage to bug. It's unstabbed, it's weak, it's special. It's not going to be breaking subs anytime soon. What this is going to allow me to do is get a nice big moonblast off on the bayonet. Now... This wasn't a Haxi battle, but I do get a crit here, and if anything's going to matter, it might be that. We'll see if that comes into play later on in the game, that, that, that nice big crit. And here, you know, once again, I misplay. I'm, for some reason, I'm convinced he's going to stay in and let his bayonet take damage as he tries to break a sub with a move that's not got a chance of doing so. So I go for the Encore as he goes into his Kettle. Doesn't, it's not going to work for me, of course, but I am behind a sub, and, you know, they say never waste a good sub. Uh, obviously I'm not going to win this matchup particularly well, but what the sub does allow me to do is get a little bit of chip damage while sort of scouting out what his offensive presence is on this Bronzong. Does he have the Gyro Ball, for example? And it turns out he does, you know, um, and that's obviously going to break the sub of a Whimsicott. Very fast, not particularly um, bulky. It's got better defense than people give it credit for, but I'm not invested. So my sub breaks, and that is fine. And what I want to do here is just, you know, make a switch into something that can take this thing on. But I'm running out of things. So what I do is go into my Houndoom, who I know can take one Gyro Ball. I know it can take just one. Can't take two after rocks. Uh, but it can take one. And hopefully I can KO this Bronzong before it does anything else particularly nasty. And I misplay again. For some reason, I'm convinced he's going to switch out. He doesn't. I go for the Pursuit. It doesn't kill. He told me he saw that coming as well. He predicted me to have Pursuit. So he stays in. He goes for the Gyro Ball. And, you know, Houndoom should never be taken out by a Bronzong. A disappointing effort, but hopefully Houndoom can pick up the pace in subsequent games. So what I do, go into Whimsicott, who will be able to revenge it from there very, very easily indeed. But it really isn't looking good at this point. You know, go for the Moonblast, and I take out the uh, Kettle, but I know what that means. What that means is he's got a nice free switch into his Sylveon, <clears throat> which is not something I can let him do too often. I'm running out of things to sack. And, you know, as you'll see, he is going to go into Fernando, the um, the Sylveon, 
and you know I have to weigh up my options. I know I need this guy, and I know I need Gallade if I've got any chance. So unfortunately, um, it's going to have to be Pilot Swine who gets sacked. I do go for the Protect beforehand. You know I have no reason not to. It's free lefties recovery. He's not gaining anything back because by now I've pretty much just assessed that he is a spec set. But now here comes the sacking of Pilot Swine. Uh, didn't do much this game, but I have high hopes for Pilot Swine. I think he's going to do well in the future. Not quite this time, you know, I am a Violite, I am max HP, but I have no special defense investment. This Hyper Voice, from half health, it will take out my Polis one from there. Now I'm scrambling. But, I'm still battling. All is not lost. And finally, finally I make a play here. Alex knows that Poison Jab is a free switch into his Mega Bayonet, and that will be the end for Mega Gallade, because he will just burn me. But, I finally make a play and go for knockoff. Thinking that's going to come in, it does KO. Without that crit from earlier, would it have KO'd? I'm not sure, I haven't run the calcs, but these things are how they play out. And suddenly, is there a chance he does have Scarf Garch on here? I predict him to overpredict, go for the Iron Heads, but he does go straight for the Outrage on my Gallade, who lives with 17 HP, goes for the Ice Punch, and clean takes out Garchomp. And suddenly, suddenly, we are right back in it. The momentum is shifting just a little bit, and there's a chance. Here comes Luminion. I can't let Gallade die. I work out it can live the rock switch in once more, so I'm going to go into my Whimsicott, my only other team member, knowing that the Scald is coming. You know, it's too, it's too tempting. He has to go for the Scald. He definitely has to. He goes for the Scald. Not going to do a huge amount to Whimsicott, but I do get burnt. That's going to seriously hamper my longevity. And now it just comes down to, you know, how much damage Whimsicott can do to this Luminion before it goes down and I have to rely on Gallade. Now I know I can take another Scald. What I should have done was Encored him into Scald. But I go for damage with the Moonblast, and this turns out to be very bad because he goes for the Tailwind. And suddenly I am really not happy about the situation. He's got a Tailwind up, and now it comes down to whether I can stall out the turns of Tailwind. Because I don't know my speed tiers. This has been a weakness of my game for a very long time. I don't know my speed tiers. I don't know how this is going to affect the final matchup. So, we get into it. For a show is hurt by its burn, and he's going to outspeed. I know once again I can take this Scald. I know I can take it. I know I can then subsequently take him out with a Moonblast. Hopefully, can I? Will I? Is it enough? Yes, it is. Down goes DDR at last. Really good showing from Luminion this high up in the competition. Now, if you've been paying attention to Whimsicott's HP, you will know that I gain 9 and lose 18. I'm currently on 9. I die next turn. I didn't work that out properly. If I had, I would have gone for a Moonblast here. As it is, I don't work it out, I go for the Protect just to try and stall out more turns. And that works, you know, he's going to go for the Hyper Voice, it's not going to hit me, I protect myself, but I do go down to burn this turn. And unfortunately, that means there is still one turn of Tailwind left remaining. And all I have is Captain Gallade. Putting up a plucky performance, comes in takes the rocks damage, but the tailwind is up. But this is jolly max speed Mega Gallade outspeeding Sylveon even with the tailwind to take the closest of 1-0s. I could not believe it. Unbelievable stuff. I was freaking out. If this had been a live recording, you'd have seen me just fall over the room. I could not believe that that had just happened. It was un believable but yes, that was how things played out. The closest of 1-0s. I mean, I was talking to Alex a little bit during and a fair bit afterwards. And, you know, through common agreement, that was one of the best battles we've ever been in. I mean, certainly for me, that was up there in the top three battles easily that I've ever been involved with. So close. The momentum was shifting. Plays were being made. In some cases, mainly me, plays were not being made. Um, but we did just manage to take the close, close 1-0 victory. But it was a fantastic game. Um, all of my all of my credit to Alex. He's a fantastic battler. His links, Twitter and YouTube, will be down in the description. I highly encourage you to go and check him out. He's a lovely guy. He's got fantastic, fun content. And he's a great battler. Uh, so definitely go and check him out. Uh, 
go and check out the PPL as I said before, um, have a look at all the other team members because you know they'll have their battles uploaded, you can see what they're doing. Um, but definitely check out Alex, you can see his side of this battle on his channel and of course all subsequent battles in the league. So off to a good start then, a shaky start but a good start nonetheless. That's one win under our belts and you know we can breathe a little bit easier. Next opponent is going to be the man Ryquin. Ryquin has a UU-ish powerful team, which I'm nervous about. But, you know, I've got some tricks of my own up my sleeve, and I reckon we can put in a good showing against, against my boy Ryquin. Uh, but that is going to be it from this week's battle. Thank you very much for watching once again. I do hope you've enjoyed. Um, remember to follow all the links down in the description below. Um, and yeah, I guess until next time, laters.